Hi, y'all. Hi, y'all. How are you? Okay? I'm all right. What's your name? My name's Anna. Anna? How old are you? I'm 23. 23? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Tower Hamlets. Okay. Born yeah. and bred? Yeah. Whitechapel Hospital. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah. I've got three brothers and I'm the only girl. Was you close with your mum and dad growing up? Uh, I'm my daddy's girl. Okay. Unfortunately, my dad passed away recently. Okay. Um, but yeah. Passed away recently. Girl. Yeah. Oh, what was that then? Um, he had cancer. Yeah. Um, he was battling it for ten years, and on the thirty-first of January this year, unfortunately, he passed away. Oh wow. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. It's alright. So what about you and your mum? Do you have a good relationship there? Yeah, we're closer now. Um, we wasn't very close, like for a couple of years. I haven't really lived at home. I grew up in a care system and stuff. So, I was very distant from my family, but due to obviously the unfortunate event of my dad dying, it's brought us closer. Okay. So, yeah. At what age um, did you move into a foster home? Um, I was 11. I was 11 when yeah. you first went there? Yeah. Okay. Did your mum and dad did they have any drug addictions? No, my mum was an alcoholic, yeah. and that was it. Your dad was completely okay? Yeah. So, what led you to get involved in taking drugs? Um, Basically, I had a lot of like neglect, parental neglect when I was young. Um, I was on the street from when I was six years old to when I was 11. And I wasn't noticed, to be honest. That's the simple fact of it. Um, I've got like 374 Metropolitan Police reports. Um, them finding me sleeping in like doorways and stuff at four or five in the morning. And at one point when I was 11, someone obviously noticed and yeah, I got taken into care. What led you at the age of six sleeping on roads? Um, obviously, my mum was an alcoholic, she didn't really pay much attention, and yeah, she didn't really bother if I was at home or not, so I was out, and obviously I found other people out there that paid attention, you know, so I just stuck to that, and obviously I got in with the wrong crowd, and things like that, and it's a force of habit, you know, it's like familiarity, I think, so being outside is more of a comfort blanket, like I prefer to be outside than indoors. You know, I feel more safer outside than I do indoors, so, yeah. Why, why is that? Um, I just think that outside's been my home for so long, you know, I've got to get used to breaking out of that, and in a sense, like, coming out of my comfort zone, and I have to learn now the skills of actually building a home, you know, and being comfortable, because I've always been around other people, I've never been on my own, <clears throat> so, yeah. Are your brothers older or the, or the younger? I've got one younger and I've got the rest older. So when you was out sleeping off, did they not come and try to get you and see where you were? No, my brothers, they grew up, they was always in prison and things like that. So we never really had that time to bond and form a brotherly sister relationship. So in a sense it's sad because like, I don't really know them. And your dad didn't come and try looking for you? No, before. no, no. It's quite sad really, isn't it? <laughs> Do you remember what age you took the first job? Yeah. Um, I was 11 when I first smoked crack cocaine and I was 16 when I first got my heroin habit. So who was the person that you did to me? Um, a lady um, called Susan in Roman Road. So you still remember the yeah, person? Yeah, of course. You still see her now? Yeah. yeah. So she just gave it to you? For what, what yeah. reason did she give you? Um, I don't know. I just think that I was always with her and I was very interested, you know, I'm a, I was a very eager child growing up. I always wanted to like, try new things and yeah. I just thought maybe as a young person, I was around adults, I looked up to them and thought it was right. And they was getting high and yeah, they was happy. And that was it. But I've got a very addictive personality. <laughs> so once I'd done it, that was it. There was no going back really. And here I am today. Remember what that felt like the first time you tried it? Yeah, I do. Um, I can't lie, it's a very nice feeling. It's a feeling that you don't get again. That's why crack, you're just chasing, chasing, chasing. You're chasing something that you'll never get. Even if you're clean for a certain amount of time, you still will not get that because every buzz is different. You'll never get it back the same. So, yeah. There's nothing good that can come out of that. Um, there's nothing good that can come out of heroin, but the only difference is heroin, you can be a functioning addict, you know? With a heroin habit, you can still keep up with your day-to-day -day appointments, like you can still live a normal functioning life, whereas crack, you just destroy everything, man. One day you wake up with everything and the next day it's gone, and there's nothing you can do about it. But some people say that heroin's meant to be worse. It's worse in the sense that 
cracks a mental um, addiction, whereas heroin is, is a physical addiction, you know, and it has terrible, terrible, like long time side effects, and yeah, like it gets into your bones, you know, it's not a joke. Like, and for crack, you can take it one day and come off it the next. Heroin, a normal cluck, which is a withdrawal, is 72 hours before you're sort of okay. But the realist of it and the statistics of it shows that even up until 12 months, your body still shows the most minimalistic signs of clucking. So, yeah. Could you explain to us um, what, what that feels like to cluck? Um, I don't know, it's horrible man, you can't move, you shiver, you shake, you sweat. It's like having no oxygen in you man, you can't move, you can't live, you know. It's like you need that to get up, you need that, like, do you know what I'm saying, without it you feel like you're going to die, there's nothing, it's like your whole soul's been taken from you and yeah, your whole life revolves around it, you know. So, it's a devil's drug, isn't it really. Are you still right with your brothers? Yeah. You talk to them? Yeah. All three of them? Yeah. So what's their opinion about what you're up to, what you're doing? Um, they're not happy. Um, they're a bit more like... Um, they're, they're a bit more like inclined now to help because before I didn't have the outlook as oh, I want to change, this, that. I just didn't, I didn't give a fuck to be honest. I just wanted to do it but I'm you can't tell me nothing. And that's it, whereas now, where I've had my son, it's like, alright, I've got to change, because I look around me now and I've got nothing. Yeah, I've lost everything, but you know what? I've still got my dignity and I've still got myself. I've never been a prostitute, I've never, not that I judge anyone that does it, but, you know? Um, yeah, I've still got my morals and my principles, so I think if I've still got that, then I'm alright. How is your son? He's good. He's alright, yeah? Yeah, he's 11 months now. Right. He'll be a year next month. Already? Yeah. Remember the last time I saw you, you was eight months pregnant? I was. How was the pregnancy? I was. It was alright, it was stressful. Um, unfortunately, I had my son on the street on my own. On the street? Yeah. I delivered my son on, on my own. So you but he was your fine. Son on White Chapel High Street? Yeah. On your own? Yeah. So you was out walking? Yeah. And you gave birth? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a quick labour? Yeah. Uh, and I waited 45 minutes for the fucking ambulance to come. And I was right next to the hospital. Gave birth on the street. Yeah. And then what, people come round and try to help you. No. You're by yourself. Yeah. So you gave birth, picked up the baby, yeah. and then went for the ambulance and went to the hospital. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, well done. No, thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Was he was he a normal weight? Yeah. Was great. Yeah. Yeah, he was six two. Okay. Yeah. Did you keep up with your addiction during the pregnancy? I did. did. Um I didn't find out I was pregnant until I was seven months. Um so, my son had already formed an addiction, unfortunately. When I went for my first scan, they said I was 28 weeks. So I got in touch with a doctor and he said um, it would be more harmful for the baby if I stopped smoking and switched to a methadone script. So, yeah. So, they, the, so the doctors actually told you mm. to carry on with your yeah. addiction but yeah. stop yeah. for the sake of the child. Yeah. So you gave birth, yeah. the child was healthy, thank yeah. God. Um, so what happens after? What do they do with the child then? Basically he went down to what's called a NICU ward, a neonatal intensive care unit. For children obviously they have to detox. And um, as adults we take um, methadone, they take oromorph. Very, very like tiny bit of oromorph. But um, my son didn't show signs of clucking until four days after. And he was only in detox for three and a half weeks of his life. He spent in the hospital. And then I had to go for assessments, parenting assessments and things like that, social services. And yeah. So he actually had an addiction? Then? Yeah. When yeah. you say signs of clocking, what does that look like for a baby? It's horrible, man. Like, a baby. screaming, shaking, sniffing, like, trying to sneeze and like cough at the same time. It's horrible, man. It's horrible. Yeah, it really is. It's horrible. Where is he now? He's at home now with my mum. He's with your mum? Yeah. So she's got custody of him or you have? No, my baby father's brother has special guardianship. Okay. So they haven't taken him off me. It's just when I'm ready, because I'm still in detox right now. Okay. When I'm ready and I'm fully clean, he'll come back to me. So instead of them adopting him and things like that, where he's getting taken away permanently, he just gives me another chance. Okay. So, yeah, but I still see him, I still, yeah. Right. So you're in the process of actually giving up? Yeah, of course. Cool. How's that going? It's all right, it's hard. I'm not gonna lie, it's hard, it's not easy. I'll be lying if I said it was easy, but yeah. Would you find yourself going back or...? Um, 
Not really now, I've had enough. You've got to want to change. You can't do it for anyone else. I couldn't do it for my son. I can't do it for my mum, my dad. I have to do it for myself, you know? And then after, whoever else. Because if you don't do it for yourself, it's not going to work. It might work for a day, two days, three days. But it's not going to work. No. no. What do you do to make money? Um, I signed up to a company called Dope Magazine. Um, it's a little bit like issue, big issue. Um, yeah. And they give us their magazines with obviously a registered badge and things like that. So they provide us with all the materials. And yeah, they're free panel magazine. And yeah, that's it really. Instead of committing crime and doing stupidness. Yeah. Before that, what would you do before to make money? Shoplifting, yeah. robberies, Everything. prison, coming out, prison, coming out. You've been in prison? Yeah. How many times have you been in prison? About seven. Yeah? What's the longest yeah. you've done? Two years. One go? Yeah. What was that for? 17 burglaries in possession of a blade. Okay. Yeah. But that's all gone now. Yeah. You're stopping all that. Definitely. Okay. So if I was to see you again off the next year, mm -hmm. what, would you, what would you like me to see? Well, if you see me next year, you'll see, you will see me with my son. Um, I'd be in my own house, hopefully. Yeah. And I'd be clean. And I'd be happy, yeah.